The Closing Process, Chapter 4. Using an example, we will walk through the closing process from adjusted trial balance to the financial statements to the post-closing trial balance. Here we have the adjusted trial balance. From the adjusted trial balance, the next step in the accounting cycle is to prepare the financial statements. So the first one we'll be preparing will be the income statement. Then we prepare the statement of owner's equity. And lastly, we prepare the balance sheet. So we're going to take consulting revenue, and that is going to be our revenue in our income statement. Then we'll look for any other revenue accounts, and we see that we have rental revenue, so we're going to include that. And so our total revenue is $8,150. Next, we want to record our expenses. Remember, on the income statement, it's only revenue and expenses are the only thing that you find there. So then we'll look at each one of our expenses and add that to the income statement. And once we have done that, then we'll take our expenses and deduct them from our revenue, and that will yield net income. So now we know from operations how much um, accumulation of owner's wealth has taken place as a result of operations. So next we'll look at preparing the statement of owner's equity. There was no beginning owner's equity for this company in our example and owner's capital increased during the month with an infusion of capital in the amount of $30,000 now our next increase in owner's equity or owner's wealth is net income. So we'll add these two components together and that is the entire increase in owner's wealth during this period. And now we're going to also take into consideration any withdrawals. So we're going to be deducting withdrawals and this will be our ending owner's equity. So what's on a statement of owner's equity, we're going to be adding any new uh, infusions of wealth plus our beginning balance and any net income and then also withdrawals. So withdrawals are only found on the statement of owner's equity and we know that ending owner's equity is both on the statement of owner's equity as well as on the balance sheet. Then we'll record all of our assets. Again, assets are only found on the balance sheet. And then we'll record all of our liabilities. Again, liabilities are only found on the balance sheet. We're going to add to our liabilities our owner's equity. So to owner's equity and liabilities should equal our assets. So what we have is equal to what we owe and what we own. So now let's look at what we have by way of ending owner's equity. So this is the amount that should be in owner's equity, but we can see from our adjusted trial balance, we only ha we have 30,000 and it should be 33,585 because we've calculated that's the amount that should be in owner's equity. So now the closing process is closing out all the income statement accounts including revenue and expenses as well as withdrawals because we want to set these to zero so revenue and expenses as well as withdrawals we want to set them to zero so we can accumulate new information for the upcoming month for the owner's equity to calculate the next how for the next period how owner's wealth has um, increased or decreased and so what we'll want to do is prepare some journal entries to close out the income statement accounts as well as the withdrawal accounts. And that is the closing process. So here we're going to start again with the adjusted trial balance and we're going to follow the same steps each time. So the closing entries are entries needed to reset income expenses and dividends to zero. Well, we can currently see that our um, consulting revenue and our rental revel has a normal credit balance so in order to zero them out we're going to have to debit them and we will want to say first of all that we'll just you know close them out to capital but because of accounting conventions and fraud that took place in the past they make accountants go through an intervening step using a new account called income summary so we will be crediting income summary for the um, 
the amount of the consulting revenue and the rental revenue. So let's see what that looks like. So here we have consulting revenue. We're debiting it, so it's going to be zeroing it out, zeroing out where rental revenue and now we'll use this account called income summary and we're going to credit it now income summary we will only use for income statement accounts so income summary will only be used when we're closing out revenue and expenses and then we're going to close out income summary to owners capital so let's look at our next step so now we are going to be crediting all of our expenses. We can see from the adjusted trial balance they have a normal balance, a debit balance, which is normal for expenses. And so we're going to want to credit all of those accounts. And we're going to add up all of those credits. And then we're going to be debiting income summary for that amount. Now I'll show you what it looks like when we close to uh, owner's capital, but I'm going to show you how to best do this by looking at a T account, and that'll be on the next slide, so just bear with me as we go from slide to slide. And so we're going to be um, looking at how income summary interrelates with capital on the next slide, but let's look at our uh, closing entry for withdrawals because that is going to be closed directly to owner's capital. So our, our withdrawals have a normal debit balance, so are we going to credit withdrawals to zero it out, and then we'll be debiting capital for that. So now let's look at that. What we'll want to do is maintain, every time we do closing entries, we're going to maintain a T account for income summary and for capital in order to avoid confusion. So let's look at this looks like when we have our T accounts. So here we have our closing entry and we see that we're crediting consulting revenue and rental revenue goes down to zero and then like I said we want to keep our uh, T account for both capital and income summaries to avoid confusion. So now we can see that we have credited income summary and so we're going to have that amount in our T account. Now let's see how it interplays with our expenses. So here we are crediting all of our expenses. So crediting these, all of our expenses in order to zero them out. And now we will be debiting income summary. So debiting income summary. So this is the closing entry, the first one. This is the second closing entry. And now we can see that we have a balance in our income summary account. So how do we balance? Well, we add up all of our debits. We add up all of our credits. Take the smaller from the larger. And now we see we have a balance in income summary. Well, income summary is an intermediary account used to help close out the books. And so what we'll want to do is to zero that out. Well, currently it has a credit balance. So how am I going to zero it out? I'll have to debit it in order for it to zero it out. And then I will be crediting capital for the amount that I am debiting. So let's see how that looks like, what that looks like. So now we have our balance here. So our income summary, we're going to be debiting it to zero it out. And then the corresponding credit that is associated with income summary would be a credit to um, capital. So we had a balance to begin with, the 30000 Now we have our third closing entry. We are going to be closing income summary to capital. And so now it's, uh, we can see the effect of that journal entry. And now let's look at our next and last journal entry, the fourth step, which is close withdrawals. So withdrawals had a normal debit balance. We're crediting it. And so now it's down to zero. And we can see in capital, we're credit, I mean, I'm sorry, we're debiting capital for the amount of our withdrawals. And so then we have, we're going to add up all of our debits, add up all of our credits, take the smaller from the larger, and then we see our ending balance. Now we know that our ending balance from our closing entries also reflects the ending owner's capital from the statement of owner's equity. And so now we can see in a snapshot of how everything interplays from the adjusted trial balance through all of the T accounts and then to our post-closing trial balance. So the last balance that we will we will be preparing will be the post-closing trial balance. So we've all pre we've prepared in our accounting cycle three trial balances. We first had our unadjusted trial balance 
then we did our adjusting journal entries, then we had an adjusted trial balance, prepared our financial statements, then we closed out the accounts, and then we have a post-closing trial balance. So a post-closing trial balance is comprised of all balance sheet accounts. And let's see how that makes sense because cash, we have a debit in our cash account. Well, that's still going to exist past the financial statement date um, that we used in order to um, accumulate owner's wealth as of a certain period of time. So cash still exists the next day when we do a balance sheet. Our accounts receivable still exist. Our supplies still exist prepaids and equipment, they all still exist. Same for our accumulated depreciation, our accounts payable, we still owe our money to our um, vendors. We still owe money to our um, employees, we still have the salary payable. We still have this unearned consulting revenue, so we still owe money to that client, but now we have an updated capital amount. So the only thing you should have on a post-closing trial balance are your balance sheet accounts, and we can see that withdrawal is zero, consulting revenue, rental revenue zero, and all of our expenses are all zero. So these have all been zeroed out so they can accumulate information for owner's wealth for the next upcoming period.